Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Monday, October 30th. Today is the 24th day um, since the October 7th attacks uh, by Hamas uh, on the south of Israel. Um, and since uh, Israel's bombing campaign began uh, on Gaza, according to the Independent, um, the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu has rejected calls for a ceasefire in Gaza. Um, it was just announced that a hostage has been released, a soldier, um, a female soldier. And this is again from the Independent. Uh, Netanyahu announced in a press conference on Monday, today, that Israel will, quote, resign Hamas to the dustbin of history. Netanyahu said that calls for a ceasefire for Israel is calling for Israel to surrender to Hamas, and that will not happen, end quote. Um, IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, announced today that a female soldier who was captured um, during uh, one of the um, incursions into Gaza uh, has been or I'm sorry, one of Hamas's incursions into Israel on October 7th, that a female soldier um, had been released uh, during a ground operation. Um, apparently she's doing well. She's been returned to her family. This is the third day since the ground invasion um, of Israelis into Gaza began. I wanted to also take a moment and acknowledge um, you know, one of the things that's reported widely in the media in Israel and Haaretz and other news articles is um, who it's believed some of the hostages are. And one of them is a woman named Vivian Silver. Um, she's believed to have been taken hostage. She lived on a kibbutz in South Israel. Um, Silver is known to be a peace activist, um, including her involvement in an organization that many of you might be familiar with called Women Wage Peace. Um, she's also been involved in an organization called The Road to Recovery. She has um, a reputation for driving um, Palestinians who are sick from Gaza to Israeli hospitals. And she's been very, very involved in the peace movement, um, especially through Women Wage Peace. And it's said that she had held a meeting of international supporters of Women Wage Peace just a few days before the Hamas attacks. Uh, this was in an interview with the Times of Israel, where Silver's son said, uh, and this is a quote, his mother would not have been completely surprised by the Hamas's massacres, but um, he told BBC that she would say that this was actually an outcome of war and quote, of not striving for peace, this is what would happen. And that just reminds me of one of the things I've been talking about. I'm home now. Um, I just finished several weeks of travel. I'll be home for about 12 days before I'll um, be on the road again. This weekend, I spoke uh, in five different contexts over you know, a 48 period, 48 hour <laughs> period of time. Um, in the last few weeks, I was in Boston and Arizona and in LA and in Seattle. And one of the things that I've been talking about is that this is an existential crisis for Israel. And as we think about the significance of October 7th and what that meant for the um, fear and security for Jewish people in Israel and around the world, one of the mechanisms of seeking to address security has been deterrence and military power in Israel. And that is what's being employed now. The idea of the Israeli military is going to reestablish deterrence. They're going to eradicate Hamas and reestablish deterrence. And part of what I hear in the words of Viv Vivian Silver is that military might doesn't work. Pursuing peace does. Um, and so I'm encouraged by her words and I, I pray for her and I pray for all the hostages. And we've been calling on U.S. government officials to advocate for the release of hostages. And as you just heard, the fifth hostage, you know, this female soldier was just released. Um, but when we think about the choices that the state of Israel has, one is deterrence or war. One is um, what I believe we see happening, the collective punishment of 2 million people in Gaza, 2 million, more than 2 million civilians to turn off water, electricity, and gas. That is the equivalent of ethnic cleansing. What happens when you turn off water? And so war, ethnic cleansing, 
And then the third option is peace. And so our advocacy and um, what we've been talking to elected officials about is calling for a ceasefire, calling for immediate, immediate, immediate water, humanitarian assistance into Gaza, calling for an end to the occupation, calling for peace. Um, we did hear that more water was turned on in Gaza, but we've not heard that the subsequent electricity that's needed has been provided. I did also, before I get into some facts and statistics, I wanted to let you know that there was a large gathering this weekend in the United States. There was a Jewish Republican rally for presidential hopefuls, um, and apparently President Trump is far ahead. This was reported in the New York Times, um, and Trump said this, if you um, spill a drop of American blood, we will spill a gallon of yours. He was arguing that the world has become less safe under the leadership of President Biden. And uh, Trump continued and said, I will defend America and I will defend Western civilization from the barbarians and savages and fascists that you see now trying to do harm to our beautiful Israel. And then also the newly elected Speaker of the House, Mr. Johnson, spoke. He's an evangelical Christian, and he said, we're going to stand like a rock with our friend and our ally, Israel. As a Christian, I know and we believe that the Bible teaches very clearly that we're to stand with Israel. So that's reported by the New York Times. Um, according to OSHA, um, the Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs of the United Nations, I wanted to just give you some updates on some statistics. These numbers are from the 28th and 29th of October, so just in the last couple of days. Um, in the vicinities of Shifa and the Al-Quds hospitals and the Indonesian hospital in North, northern Gaza, they have reported um, being uh, bombarded and damage to the hospitals. Um, there have been significant calls from the Israeli military to evacuate the hospital facilities. Um, all 10 hospitals were still operational in Gaza City, and northern Gaza has received repeated evacuation orders in recent days. Um, this, uh, we've been talking about this, the call to evacuate hospitals being illegal according to international law. Sick people, um, people with disabilities are unable to move. But Israel declared that after the evacuation orders, if you stayed, you would be seen as a combatant. You would be seen uh, and viewed um, as being complicit with Hamas. I just got reports personally today via text messages that the Turkish hospital um, had been attacked. I saw videos um, with uh, smoke, uh, the Turkish hospital, my understanding is the only cancer treatment, cancer treatment center uh, in Gaza. And so um, there was evidence that that had been attacked as well. Um, I did wanna call attention to, and I mentioned this yesterday, but that um, on the 28th of October, thousands of people had broken into UNRWA warehouses and distribution centers in the middle and in South Gaza, taking wheat flour and hygiene supplies. And on the 29th of October, according to UNRWA, their operations director, Tom White, indicated that this was a worrying sign, quote, of civil order starting to break down after three weeks of war and a tight siege on Gaza. Um, on the 29th, uh, 33 trucks carrying water, food, and medical supplies were allowed into Gaza through Rafa. That was the largest delivery of humanitarian aid uh, since the 21st of October. 33 trucks um, when limited deliveries resumed. This increase is welcome. This is, of course, uh, according to OSHA, but a much larger volume of aid is needed. And there are significant concerns about civil unrest as um, food is becoming increasingly in limited supply. It seems to be that telecommunications have been largely restored. I had heard that personally. It's also now being reported. Um, between uh, the 28th and 29th of recorder, the Ministry of Health in Gaza that is run by Hamas reported that 302 Palestinians were killed. And so the hostilities um, as of the 29th and these numbers, of course, you know, depending on when you look, they're updated regularly, was that more than 8,000 uh, and five um, people had already died in Gaza, 67% of whom were women and children. According to Israeli authorities, um, the number now of those held in Gaza is believed to be 239 hostages held um, 
in Gaza. It's believed 30 of those to be children. Um, four hostages were released between the 20th, on the 20th and 23rd of October. One was just released today. Hamas has claimed that 50 hostages were killed in airstrikes. I wanted to just give a quick update on the West Bank. Um, it was reported between the 28th and 29th of October that four Palestinians uh, were killed by Israeli forces during that time period, um, and that the total number of Palestinian fatalities by Israeli forces or settlers since October 7th is now 115, uh, and 33 of those are children, and that one Israeli soldier was killed by Palestinians. Um, in addition, uh, in the West Bank, um, almost a thousand Palestinians have been forcibly displaced from their homes. Most of those are um, Bedouins or herding communities in Area C, where 800 people that were a part of 98 Palestinian households uh, were um, relocated amid intensified settler violence and access restrictions, and then an additional 121 Palestinians were displaced following the demolition of their homes by Israeli authorities on grounds of lack of Israeli-issued building permits or on punitive grounds. And I'm just, those are our direct reports from OSHA, um, and I can give you all of those links. So if you ever have questions about where facts and statistics are coming from, we want to let you know uh, directly where those are being reported. So I would invite you this week, we do have a prayer gathering again every Wednesday. Um, we do a verbal brief on Thursdays where there's an opportunity for you to ask questions. Um, continue to stand in the gap with us. Give, take action. If you have not taken that action alert calling for a ceasefire, even though Netanyahu said he's not open to it, we are calling on President Biden and the U.S. government to, to do everything possible to call for a ceasefire, immediate uh, access to humanitarian aid and water for those in Gaza. And then, of course, we're continuing to pray for peace.